Well, good morning, Tanglewood. Good morning. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, what a good-looking crowd. Let's stand up and sing Angels We Have Heard on High. seated, would you? As you can tell, I am not Pastor Bill. Uh, he's much younger and better looking, um, but uh, I've got big, more kids in my family. I don't know what that means, but anyway, I do have some announcements we want to share with you before we forget, and um, you know, do we, we go to the Lord, we pray first, right? Let's pray a blessing over this service. Father, we come to you today in grateful praise for all that you've done. Lord, we give you glory. Father, thank you for all that you've done in our lives that brought us to this good day and to this service. Well, Father, we ask a special blessing here. We know you're here with us. We ask your presence to be felt in our hearts so much that it changes our lives. 
Oh, Father, I pray you would sing a place through me, sing through our praise tune choir. Father, play through our ladies, those who serve. Preach through our brother Randy. Use him in a mighty way today. Fill him with your spirit. Lord, as we come to this time of year, that we might rededicate our lives, Father, when we see the awesome wonder of your love, that you love us, Lord, that you gave the Lord Jesus for us. Bless this time together. Father, bless the coming days and help us all to give you glory, all the praise you deserve in Jesus' name. All right, got a few announcements today. Uh, number one, caroling is tonight at 6 o'clock. Okay, y'all know Carol? Huh? <laughs> we're going we're to go visit her. Caroling tonight, Christmas caroling. All right. Also, Christmas Eve, we will have two services, Sunday morning, as usual, and then Sunday night at 7 o'clock have a special Christmas Eve service. I love those. The Christmas Eve service Sunday night, 7 o'clock, in addition to our Sunday morning services. All right. Um, also, Men's Life, uh, you're meeting Monday at 2. Okay, guys, don't forget about that. Ladies, Bible study at Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Uh, Men's Life, I think Brian has... That's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, yes, it's tomorrow, yes. But I'm talking about the women. Sorry, I regressed. Um, uh, yeah, Men's Life, Brian has the Bible study material, all right, so he's a handsome young gentleman here, all right, you can see him for that. Uh, again, ladies, Bible study Tuesday at 10 in the morning, not at night. Uh, also, um, we have next Sunday is our fifth Sunday coffee, is it next Sunday? No, week, two weeks. Two weeks ago. Why are we announcing it today? I don't know. Uh, fifth Sunday, <laughs> hey, coffee at eight thirty, um, and I have no idea what this is. Oh, I know. Oh, congregational meeting. Never mind. Uh, Randy's got this in Swahili here, <laughs> but it's the uh, it's the congregational meeting will be right after our service. So members, you're encouraged to stay. Uh, those of the others uh, who would like to, of course. But we'll have a, a short meeting right after the service, and our friend Randy uh, will be uh, conducting that. So you we'll wanna... need your votes on ad uh, advisory committee members for next year or next two years, and then also on the budget for 2024. So members, please stay and be involved in the voting uh, so we can get that hopefully pass the courts, but get it made official for our books. All right, as we come to uh, uh, our candle lighting, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. This is the candle of love. And our verse is John three sixteen through 19. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Do you all have the words up there? You do? Yeah, they're up, up in the big they don't. They don't. They're just not up there. All right, let's stand and sing again. May we away in the manger.
sing it. sing that once again, may we? And you just sing it to the Lord. Close your eyes, whatever you want to do, and just worship him. May we? Thank you, Mary Mary. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? A little dreary outside, but it's always sunny and warm and bright inside here. Uh, even though the lights are turned down low, uh, we still feel the love and the joy of Christ. As any good preacher would do, and that is to acknowledge that the sermon that you're going to deliver is not totally yours or coming from me. Pastor Bill has a series going here with the Advent season and this being the Sunday of love and he thought it was enough, important enough to ask me if he could humble me to use his notes for today and that's what I've done. So what you hear is going to be mostly his some of mine where I've changed it or added or subtracted, but just so you know that it's not all mine and I'm not claiming it. I'm just the delivery boy, if you will. And that's not meant derogatory in any way. But one Sunday during the children's sermon, the pastor was telling the kid, he said, uh, 
he was telling him about how the angel came to Mary and told her that she was going to have this baby and bring Jesus into the world. And one little girl, she looked kind of puzzled. And she just wasn't sure about this. So she asked the pastor, thought the, what's the, or the pastor asked, what's the first thing you think Mary said or did when the angel came to her and told her she was going to have the baby? Well, instantly another little girl jumped up and chimed in. I'll bet she asked for a little help from Joseph. Well, it is Christmas time. We do focus our attention on the infant Jesus. But the greater truth in Christianity is not just a baby in a manger. This is a fulfillment a prophecy that this baby was going to come. It is where our emphasis should be on the deity or the God uh, relationship between Jesus and his father. So this baby born in human form, the way God wanted it to be, so Christmas is that celebration that the love God had for everyone. In fact, a love so deep that he sent his only son to come to a virgin birth so there's no influence of sin anywhere, to live among the people, and then also, of course, to die for our sins, and then the, the joyous resurrection that came after that. So Christmas is the celebration of that love and this incredible act that God did to bring into the world Emmanuel. Now you can spell that with an E or with an I, either Emmanuel with an I or Emmanuel with an E, it doesn't matter. They both mean God with us. Very simple definition. God with us. So after, during the last three weeks, we've been following Advent. We've had the other candles lit of joy and hope. And uh, I'm not sure if we've been to feast yet or not. But anyway, and today, the candle of love. So, in the Christian church, the Advent season, if you will, is to talk about the events leading up to the birth of Jesus. And you notice the Advent wreath, made out of pine, which is a uh, prevalent thing, if you will, and, and pine trees grow many, many years, and uh, but the the green circle of the pine, the wreath, if you will. Notice there's no beginning and there's no end. And that symbolizes God's love for us. No end in his love. Of course, there was a beginning. It's a reminder of the joy and the hope that God gave us to follow Jesus, live the life that he wanted us to live. So when we look at the candles, the hope candle is used to teach us about the prophecy of our Lord's first coming. And if you read in your Bibles, Isaiah, Isaiah predicted that the birth of Jesus and all the promises of the Old Testament. I believe there's only one book, and I can't recall right now at the top of my head, where Jesus is not mentioned. And I want to say it's Ruth, but don't hold me to that. But one book, including all the Old Testament, all the Old Testament, there's prophecy about Jesus coming. We have the peace candle, 
And of all the divisions and the destruction and the dispersions of faith, we still have the peace of Christ with us. And then there's the joy candle. And our, our joy grows more and more as we approach the birth of Jesus. This joyful anticipation, if you will, of Christmas Eve when we celebrate the birth. But today we're looking at the candle of love. And we're reminded that Christmas is about the celebration of the power, celebration of the promise, but also the pinnacle, the highest level of love that anybody can ever have for humanity. The ultimate love of God was in sending Jesus into our lives. So Christmas is a celebration of the promises of God's love. We tend to take God's nature for granted and we want to believe that God loves us in the world and, and even his enemies. But you know what? In the Old Testament, there's nowhere where it says God loves everybody. Nowhere does it say that God loves the Old Testament, or in the Old Testament, that God loves all people. This is a revolutionary idea that only came forth after the birth of Jesus. It's in the act of God taking on humanity that God dramatically showed his love for all humanity. And then what's God's motivation for people in, in this love? His motivation, that love was God's motivation to come in the form of a man. He came in the midst of the normalcy of life. There was a census being taken, which happens every 14 years at this time, and, and you had to go back to your birth town, if you will, or your birthplace, once every 14 years. So this is what Mary and Joseph had to do in fact, it was about 80 miles that they had to walk. Or we see Mary being uh, led on a donkey. But you had to cover those 80 miles. And when they got to Bethlehem, they, they weren't really shocked by the fact that there was no room at the inn. Of course, we know there was no Motel 6 or Holiday Inn Express or anything like that. So they, they weren't angry when they were offered the barn, if you will. They didn't know of any of the modern-day hosts that we have. So God's love is a deliberate attitude that leads to deliberate action. Something like the same man that rushes into a burning building to save his family. Unfortunately, sometimes that man may leave the family. And supposedly for the love of another. But God doesn't fall in and out of love for us. No matter who we are, where we've been, what we're doing, or where we're going. God loves us in a way that we just can't fathom. How can he love me when I do the things I do or say the things that I say or maybe the sin of omission where I should have done this but didn't? But God's love for me says, Randy, you're okay. As long as you recognize your sin, repent of your sin, and really mean it, and don't go back. You are forgiven. Well, the 
evidence of God's love is found in what he has done and what he does. God's love is so strong that all of human history is centered around this one event, and that is the birth of Christ. Jesus coming to save all of us from our sins. The sins then, the sins in the meantime, the sins now, and the sins in the future. So this babe in the manger on that first Christmas was the evidence of God's love. The lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. This unblemished lamb was the sacrifice. And then the shedding of blood. We have to go there. We have to go to the brutal beating and, and the flogging and everything. That was evidence of God's love. And again, Jesus was foreordained prior to his actual birth. Well, God's, the evidence of God's love comes sometimes, or not sometimes, before the foundation of the earth. God, not by some uncontrollable emotion, but his perfect will had already been determined to demonstrate the power of his love toward man. Look at Ephesians 1, 1 through 4. Before Adam and Eve's first fall, before the rise of the star in the east, before the shepherds were sent to him, before the magi came seeking him, and before there was no room in the end, God already had his love established for us. Paul tells us God demonstrated the power of his love toward us while, while we were yet sinners. Find in Romans 5, verse 8. At our darkest times, God has a unique kind of love for us. Unconditional not based on anything else but his unconditional love for us. And then when the time was full, when it was ready, then God sent Jesus into the world as the babe in the manger to be the savior of man. You know, Christmas is fun. We have a lot of fun at Christmas. We celebrate, families get together, we maybe go to somebody else's house, but we celebrate the birth of Jesus. But sometimes we end up focusing on something else. We get focused on the gifts. Gee, what am I going to get dad? Is it going to be another necktie or another pair of socks? Or I wonder what size underwear he wears now. You know, that's where our attention goes. And then the food. Now, as you can tell, I love food. And I love Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas dinners. And, and I really miss what it used to be when I was uh, growing up. And we'd always go to Uncle Rip's. You know, it was Richard Green, but they called him Rip. And Rip had a huge farm. And they had a table in their dining room that would seat probably 20 of us. So all the family went to Uncle Rip and Aunt Helen's. The food was tremendous. What a layout. And Uncle Rip would have, he would say grace, and he would end up blessing every cow out in the barn and every pig over here in this slough and, and you know, all these other things. And I still remember my dad saying the blank potatoes were cold before he ever got done. But you know what? That is, I say, the seed 
that Uncle Rip planted in me. Not the fact that he blessed all his animals and everything individually, but the fact that his faith was based on his life. And he knew that he had to be thankful for everything he had. So again, that was, and I'm talking early teens, when I started realizing through that long prayer how deep his faith was. We go shopping. We have fun. We go out on Black Friday, although Black Friday now is, what, two weeks long and starts before and it's still Black Friday afterwards because it's all the economics. It's all about the money, what they can get for what you're going to spend for other people. Well, this man went out driving one night, and he was going out to do some Christmas shopping, and his wife was home watching TV. And she heard the announcer say, be very careful and watch driving on Highway I-5 today. There's a motorist driving the wrong way. Well, his reply is, you telling me? He said, there's about 100 of them. Think about it. Paul tells Titus in his letter that the power of God's love is so accomplished in Jesus that they gave us the hope of eternal life. You know, God can't lie. When God promised us what he did, there's no second thought. We should not think about, well, is this really? No, nah, he, he doesn't mean that. We really need to think about the things that God does. So Christmas is the celebration of the promise. Celebration of the promise and also the power of God's love. Before the foundation of the world, he came to save us from our sins. Something Pastor Bill wrote that I'm going to quote. He said, every time I think of the Christmas story, I'm reminded of the story, the boy who wanted to be Joseph in the Sunday school pageant. Well, instead, he was cast as the landlord of the inn. And he objected loudly, but it didn't do any good. He ended up with that uh, position. So when the pageant, pageant was uh, conducted, Mary and Joseph were knocking on the door, and the boy playing Joseph uh, smiled and said, yes, sure, lots of room, come on in. Well, the boy said, okay. But the boy playing Joseph looked inside, and he He said, we'll take the barn. We'll take the barn. Because what he saw inside wasn't what it was to be. He said, I'm not going to have my wife and my uh, baby come in a place like this. We'll take the barn. Think about that. It's ironic that, you know, over 2,000 years later, the situation with the inn is very much symbolic of the way we respond to Christ's coming when we celebrate the day. People's hearts are so full of, of all this other stuff that we have. We don't have room for him in our inn, if you will. The door's not open all the time to let God in. It's sometimes we think of the birth in some detached area. Or sometimes we go. 
to this detached area, completely away from the birthplace. But to those who know him, respond to his love. Mary represented with incredible faith and joy at the promise of God's love coming to her. It was obvious that Mary and Joseph knew God loved them deeply, and, and though they didn't understand completely all the details that God was still working out, but they had the promise of God. So uh, God's love is, isn't limited to a few, or a group, but to the whole world. When God came to Mary and Joseph, when he sent the angel, it wasn't just for them. The angel told Joseph Jesus would save his people from their sins. And remember, Jesus was Jewish, but he didn't come just to save the Jews. And the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. So Christmas is a celebration of the promises of God and also the power of God's love. The expression of God's love is in his will, not ours. Every prayer we pray should pray that not my will, but yours. You know, love can get people to do some illogical things. It can cause a man to rush into a burning building to save his family. A soldier sacrifices life for his country. Love will cause parents to endure some really, really tough situations and hardships. But even so, none of these things can begin to compare to the power of God's love. And it's also not emotional. Christmas is a celebration of the pinnacle, the highest peak, of God's love. We have high expectations at Christmas. We want everything to be perfect. We, the decorations and the parties and, and all the things, the baked goods and the presents and even the songs we sing. You know, the most wonderful time of the year. We talk about that. How, have a holly jolly Christmas or oh, what fun it is to ride. And I don't know if you have, but I've ridden in a one-horse open sleigh in the snow in northwest Ohio. That was kind of neat. And you could relate to the song, but oh, what fun it is. But is it all about fun? Of course, Christmas is a joyous celebration as it was in that first Christmas. Never has history experienced a higher point of love. This omnipotent creator of heaven and earth, God came to dwell with us. The center of God's love now lay in the manger. And I think there's, yeah, one right here. When you look at that, picture Jesus in that manger. And picture the emotions that should go through your head when you do. You know, his coming brought shouts of tidings of great joy, part of another hymn, brought eternal hope, and his coming assured us of his commitment to love and keep us as his own. One father called his family together at the beginning of Christmas season and told each family member how he expected them to behave during Christmas. They were to be kind to one another. 
They were to spend more time with the family. They were to be frugal with the amount of money they spent. And then he finished his little speech with a rally. And he said, let's make this Christmas the greatest one ever. So I encourage you, if you're getting together with family this Christmas, I'm not sure if you would lay out expectations like this man did. Of course you can. But if nothing else, ask them to make this the greatest Christmas celebration ever. His two-year-old son said, God, we've already had that in the first Christmas. Wow, second grader already saw that. He saw the promise. He said, there's just no improving on the first and true meaning of Christmas. So again, Christmas is of the promises of God and also the power of God. And Christ, or Christmas is the celebration again of that, that pinnacle, if you will, of God's love. There's no higher love, no higher love than the love of Jesus for each of us. When we consider that, when we accept that love, when we respect that love, and when we respond with love, you have the promise that God is with you. So when we, during Christmas, sometimes focus on things other than the babe in the manger, we need to remember that the truth, the truth of Christmas was not the birth of a baby. It was about God himself in human form. Making Christmas a celebration and that love that brought God to do this incredible act and become our Emmanuel, God with us. It's a promised love that to all who believe in it. It's a promised love for all those who receive it. It's the pinnacle of God's love. <clears throat> and knowing that in that pinnacle, greatest love God can have is intended for every single one of us. And he loves us so much that he's promised to come again. So where he is, we may be also. And even so, come Lord Jesus. Father, we do come to you today with anticipation of the birth of the baby and of the promise and the power of your love for us that was shown through the life of Jesus. So, Lord, we come today just expressing our love for you out of the respect of the pinnacle of love you have for us. So may we not only love you, but love each other, our family, our friends, our sisters and brothers here in Tanglewood, that we show the love of Christ <clears throat> to all that we meet. May we celebrate this Christmas with the true meaning that God came to us in human form because he loved us so much. So Lord, just be with us, lead us and guide us, but most of all, help us to spread your love to whomever and wherever we go. <clears throat> Please remain in a spirit of prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy 
kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtor. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. And may you go from here with the peace of God, the peace that will pass all understanding, the peace that will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when you go, go in that peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we have our praise band to close us out this morning. God bless you. Have a great week.